Hi, I'm Ryan Thompson, and you know I really like banjos, and I play the banjo almost every day, and I've got a book here that I think that you might find interesting if you like banjos. And this is the book. The book is entitled Dobson's New System for the Banjo. And now it's called A New System, but what's really interesting about this book is that it was originally published over 130 years ago, and it's been reprinted by Captain Fiddle Publications. And you can look that up at CaptainFiddle.com. Now what's really interesting about this book is that because it's a complete system for the banjo, he's talking about everything from music theory, how to read music, how to do the special tunings that he uses to play his tunes in, and he includes a lot of tunes in here. There's tunes in all different styles from popular songs of the era and jigs and hornpipes and shottishes and mazurkas and waltzes and so forth. Some of the tunes are composed by himself, by George Dobson. Other tunes are composed by people um, such as uh, a Jay Buckley and someone named um, A.M. Hernandez, for example. Here's some tunes uh, that are unattributed. Um, Here's one, Emmett's Reel. Perhaps that was someone he knew, Emmett, that played the banjo, and he wrote a tune called Emmett's Reel. There's a tune called the Elwood Waltz. Now, is that's really interesting. Is that a tune that was composed in honor of Elwood, or was Elwood someone who composed the tune himself? Who knows, but it's interesting tunes. And because the tunes are in standard no notation, that means that you could sit down at a piano, if you played piano and you could play them, or if you play the violin or the mandolin, if you can read music. Now, there's nothing in tablature in here. So this isn't a Clawhammer book about Clawhammer old time open back music and it's also not a bluegrass banjo book this is George Dobson's own system for the banjo which is really interesting I think historically um, let me read a little bit of the preface in his book he says the elementary portion of this work will be found brief and to the point all that is deemed necessary that is the three principal keys of the banjo as well as the scales chords and exercises in each are fully explained the banjo could be performed, however, in any key, but with less facility, and the most adept professionals seldom use more than are herein contained. So that's really interesting. That's uh, George's point of view, that the keys of D, A, and E are the keys preferred by the professionals, and it's also part of his own system in here. Um, he has a lot of different tunes in the book, for, like I said, and what's really um, kind of useful in his method is that he started with simple tunes at the beginning and he works up to medium difficulty tunes and then he goes on to more advanced tunes he has a lot of instruction on reading music on the scales the notes are in the scales and how to make chords and he talks about rhythm and how to play different types of rhythms on the banjo and he illustrates these in music he talks about this is really interesting, I think. Right here in the middle, when he's talking about how, to, how a banjo works and the different keys and the scales and the music theory that's associated with it, he has a section called Directions for Fretting the Banjo. And essentially what this is, the way I read it, is that if you were going to build a banjo, this is how you would lay out the frets. He says, the distance from the nut to the bridge, the nut is the small piece of wood over which the strings pass to the pegs, must be divided into 18 equal parts. Then place in the first fret, then again divide the distance from the first fret to the bridge into 18 equal parts and place in the second fret, and so on, until you have inlaid 12 frets, which is all that is necessary. The frets should be an eighth of an inch in width of veneer, inlaid level with the surface of the fingerboard. Now this is really interesting, because if the frets are inlaid level with the surface of the fingerboard. Essentially what you have is a fretless banjo. Now it has the frets because you can see these pieces of wood that are inlaid, but you can't feel them. So those of you that are familiar with a modern banjo that has steel frets in it, you can see that there's a big difference between this banjo where you can see the frets, but you can't feel them. So then he talks about directions for stringing up the banjo. He talks about his tuning that he uses. He has his own special tunings that are uh, different than modern bluegrass tunings. He has a little section on the manner of playing the banjo guitar style, the manner of playing stroke or a banjo style, where he has the various different rhythms and which fingers 
he uses on which notes to do his style. So I think overall it's a really interesting book. It's um, 72 pages. It's on heavyweight paper. It's comb bound so it'll sit on a music stand. And uh, there's this a lot of really interesting historical things in here. Here's the kettle drum polka, the lily mazurka, all kinds of interesting names. Vilkins and his Dinah, the crow jig, the blue bells of Scotland. So he has some pop numbers in here. Here's the Anderson jig and Nichols jig. Champagne Charlie. It's arranged by George Dobson. So a lot of times he'll take a pop tune and then he'll um, write down his own arrangement of that tune. Here's Captain Jinx. There's a number of exercises. The Harry Waltz. H-A-R-R-Y. So what is the Harry Waltz? Is that is that someone named Harry? Was that a friend of his? Um, who knows? But it sure is interesting to see that it's written down and we can get a little piece of history in here. So um, if you're really in interested in banjo and you collect things, this might be a book that you might want to have in your collection. Dobson's New System for the Banjo. And this is available through Captain Fiddle Publications and CaptainFiddle.com. So I hope you have a good day.